Hola Geek fans, it's that time again, it's 4.30, it's Friday, we're at the Charter Studios in Eastern Connecticut, and we are Geeks at the Movies. I'm going to be your host today, my name is Shane Goodrich, joining me as always, our lead writer, the Mr. Jacob Desertels. What's going on guys? You know the deal by now, this is movie and TV talk from our perspective, the geek perspective, and we are real life geeks, we don't just play ones on TV, let's just get right to it, with the geek news. Item number one. A new rumor has emerged that Mad Max Fury Road director George Miller will be directing Man of Steel 2. <gasps> My beating, fluttering heart! The Jacob, what do you think about this? I don't know that this is actually true, but if it is true, I'm all in. Uh, the, the reason that I don't think this is true is because it came from one guy who I actually know about. It's John Schnepp from Collider Movie Talk. He has his own movie that just came out about uh, Superman, actually. Right, that movie that didn't come out, Man of Steel. I forget yeah. what it's called, but... Yeah, the, the uh, Death of Superman Lives. Right. And he he knows about... He's in the in the movie sphere. He knows all right. about that. He's in the industry. I mean, he knows yeah. insiders. Yeah, but... And he, he was just on a show, on another show that he does, and he just came out and said, like, yeah, George Miller's doing... Uh, he's doing uh, Man of Steel 2. And I don't... But that's why I don't know if it's actually going to happen, but... I am hopeful that it will happen, and I really want George Miller to be in this new uh, DC Extended Universe because he was actually signed on to do a Justice League movie way back in the early 2000s, and he had like he had the whole cast, uh, every, he had like everything done, and then it just didn't go anywhere. So if he does Man of Steel 2, I don't know if it's gonna, I don't know like what kind of feel it's gonna have because Mad Max Fury Road had, was like this big spectacle, yes. had like all this crazy action and everything. And Man of Steel is kind of different than yes. that. It's very has a very like down to earth tone, but he's a guy that goes out and fights aliens at the same time. Right. The spectacle, I mean, it has a down to earth tone, but those fight scenes in Man of Steel, yes. wow, they are so uh, unbelievable. I, I was just stunned watching him fight uh, Zod at the end. There's yes, there, there's a lot of complaints. Oh, he's ruining Metropolis, but who cares? It looks amazing. They they go into outer space. They, they smash into that Wayne satellite. It is so cool looking. The action is amazing. And for like long periods of the movie, the action is also like this non-stop thing. It just, it just moves to one beat, to another, to another, to another. And that's what Mad Max Free Road was. It was this long car chase where just one action scene after another, after another. So if you take that kind of that, that really the good action that, that he did in that movie, George Miller did, and then you add some of the, the other story elements to it, which I'm, I'm assuming he's capable of doing that. Yeah. Uh, he already has a universe to draw from. This can be really exciting. And he also can bring maybe maybe a little bit of more of a grounded feel to it. Because the thing I liked about Mad Max Fury Road was, spoiler alert, there are a lot of, a lot of use of CGI. People are like, oh, it's all practical effects. It's so amazing. Check out some of, the, some of the footage. You can see there's a lot of CGI enhancements. But he grounded it in those practical effects. He had real vehicles there. right? Yes. Some of the things with Superman... It was really good CGI. It was yeah. great. But sometimes you're like, this is a little... It's a, it's a little yeah. tiny bit wonky. I, I, remember, I remember there was this one part where he's fighting that... Uh, the thing that's terraforming the Earth and it has like this weird like tentacle thing that came out. It, you could obviously tell it's CGI because yeah. it, it, was, it was too much CGI. It was too, yeah, it was, it was too removed from the real world. Yeah. Like, I, I was... That scene was kind of cool looking and they had the good uh, like the George Zimmer music playing yeah. so I was like yeah this is awesome yeah. but at the same time like I watched it again I'm like what the hell is this <laughs> yeah. it's just like this like this is a giant octopus wrote with yeah. I don't even know what's happening right now yeah so if you can make things a, just a little bit more grounded I already like Man of Steel it was awesome yeah this is just nitpicking right now we, yes. we like the movie but this would be an interesting take on it because I don't want to see the same thing over and over again just like we see with the MCU we see different Different versions of the MCU. It's all of a one piece. They, they kind of match the tones pretty well, even when the movies are different. Um, so I'd like to see that with the, the, the DC Cinematic Universe a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, George Miller, he's a very, he has a very distinct style, but he does so many different movies. There was this weird uh, time for him in the early 2000s, like the late 90s, where he directed Babe. And he directed the Whoa, Happy Feet movies. Stop for a moment. Yeah. Babe, you're talking about that pig movie? Yeah. He directed that after he, after he was done directing Mad Max, uh, the third one. He's like, I'm going to go direct this talking pig movie. And then I'm going to go direct this animated penguin movie. Wait, what? what? He, he directed Happy Feet. <laughs> but bo both of them. So he, so he, he has a very strange uh, style that he can fit into these different kind of movies. And with then went back to Mad Max. He's like, I'm old. I want to direct another Mad Max movie. 
and then they let him, and now if if he's going to direct Man of Steel two, I think he's going to do a great job with that. That is, I'm I, I am now impressed. <laughs> you are the Daniel Day Lewis of directors <laughs> because that was. That is just unbelievable. Like, you're telling me this, and I'm having a hard time believing you, but I know you're telling me the truth. But Mad Max, like you see Mad Max Fury Road, that's like a violent, brutal, relentless, dystopian future. Yeah. And then you think of Babe. <laughs> it's just, oh, look, the Babe is so cute, and the happy feet. Oh, yeah. the penguins. It's, it's... All right. I, I'm, I'm down for this idea. But again, this is a rumor. We don't know what actually is going to happen. We'll yeah. see. Let's move on to item number two. Earlier this year, it was reported that an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spin-off show was in the works, and the show would focus on the characters Mockingbird and Lance Hunter. It is now being reported that ABC is close to ordering a pilot, series for the seri- a pilot episode for the series, and it will be titled Marvel's Most Wanted. Before I get to my opinions on this, Jake, what is your opinion? I am so not down for this. I don't want this show to ha- happen. I don't, li- I, don't, I don't love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I like it. It's, it's okay. It's kind of a show that I just tolerate because it's part of the Mar- Marvel Cinematic Universe. You don't love it. You like it. It's okay. I tolerate yes. it. You're going downhill as you talk about it. I know. What you it, think about I, it. I know, yeah. I'm just thinking about all the different things that are happening. And it just... It, that, that, sh- that show, it, it's not where I want to be on quality level. And I think with this show, it's going to continue that and maybe even go a little bit more downhill. Because I like... I actually like the character of Mockingjay. I, I actually like the title, too. Or was most wanted. It kind of sounds pr- pretty cool. Maybe. So who's so tell the viewers out there. Maybe yes. they don't watch Agency. Who's Mocking Jay? Who's Lance Hunter? Who are these people? Uh, Mockingbird. She's, oh, Mockingbird. Yeah, she's uh, in Agent of Shield. She's like she's a superhero from the comics. She's like one of the only superheroes on that that they have on that show. But she's just an agent on uh, for Shield. She has like this weird staff that she fights with. She's um, she's a tall blonde. Yeah, and then Lance Hunter is her like ex husband. Yes. Afraid. Yeah, and. They've kind of been teasing their like relationship, like get, getting back together in the show. So it's gonna. It, this uh, seems like it's actually gonna happen. And I don't. I don't really care. I don't really care about these characters that much, even though I like Mockingbird in like when she's like actually having, having uh, action scenes. But I don't really care about this show. And I think Marvel has enough on its plate with the TV universe already. And I think this was a, this was a just take up room. I agree completely. I, I, I'm really confused, Marvel. Why are you doing this? You already know that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has not gotten the best reception. Yeah. So, you had the first season. Things weren't going so well. I will grant you, you've got, you made things a little better. You think things are a little better in season two. But that doesn't mean I need another series of it. We're going to talk later about uh, the new Fear of the Walking Dead pilot. We're going to talk about, that's another spinoff series that... Did we need it or did we not? We'll get to that later on. But this, I just don't feel like I need it. These characters, for for me, they're just kind of may. I don't I don't particularly like her. I don't dislike her. You know what I do? This is what I do when they're on the air. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. the problem. I, it's like, so why would I want to see more of them? That's just so confusing to me. And why would they choose these characters? They choose. Actually, you know what? Who the hell else would they choose? Because yeah. other, char- <laughs> other characters are particularly interesting in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. She, I think they chose it because Mockingbird is actually, a, from the comics, she's actually a superhero. She had a relationship with uh, Hawkeye in the comics, actually. So maybe they're going to have some kind of weird, like, Mr. and Mrs. Smith kind of feel to this show. But I, that still doesn't really Maybe they'll give her powers. Me. How about that? Would that be cool if they actually made her? When we say superhero, are we saying that she has powers? Like no. How- no, she, she's like Hawkeye powered. So she doesn't have actually have any power. <laughs> yeah, I love Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, with this show, they're they're gonna have some kind of like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith kind of feel to it, and it's going to be them going after like other organizations that she doesn't have time to deal with. But I don't really wait. So not, the, not, you, your pitch, Jake, sounds. I know. I know you're just you're just talking, but it yeah. sounds terrible. I know. I it's know. Like, it so 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 already the B show because this is the B show of the universe. No one no no one cares. No one gives a fuck about Agents of Shields. So now we're gonna do the B team of Agents of Shields. Yeah. What are you thinking? How is that a good idea? But maybe with these guys, if they're actually leaving Shield and doing their own thing, maybe they'll actually introduce some more interesting characters to Shield. Could like there's a, they're gonna have room. To f- fill in, because they're doing the uh, the Secret Warriors, and then they have the Inhumans. They have all the, all these characters. So maybe they're like, 
get, get these guys out of here, get, uh, give them their own show, and then we're going to bring in some new characters. See, what I would prefer is a um, tactical nuke hit the Agents <laughs> of S.H.I.E.L.D. base and kill all the characters in the show, and they reboot the show with Coulson somehow uh, surviving again, and we just start over. That's what I would prefer. Or just cancel the show. And the Joe I second said, yes, that's what we need. Is I don't understand. The MCU is so good, right? And you see, like, uh, like in the smaller venues, like Daredevil. It's fantastic. Jake, why is it Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Daredevil? I, can you explain that to me? I don't, I honestly don't know. Because this show was supposed to be awesome when it, when it first came out. I was so ready for it. So psyched. And, and then the, uh, the, then, uh, the first episode came out, and I was, I was watching, I was like, okay, okay. And then after it was over, I was like, that was a waste of time. I didn't want to spend an hour watching the show. No. I, I, I was hope. <laughs> there were so many things I was hoping for that they didn't do. For one, for one, the show was very bizarre because Captain America Civil War, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier came out like halfway through it. And it's yeah. like, wait, why does this show exist? Did you plan it all ahead of time? And, and, then, and then because of what happened in... Uh, Captain America Civil War, they had to dr dramatically change their show because of the events yeah. in that. It, so that felt that with the Winter Soldier turn around, some people say, oh, it made it more interesting. But I also felt it just made it very bizarre. Yeah. And then Josh Whedon kind of, uh, let's not go, go into the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right now, Geeks of the Movies, we're not too pleased about, about this idea. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. And when the show comes out, we'll give it a review. And also, uh, a lot of, like, 90% of uh, shows that get... Uh, Pilots order don't actually get turned to full shows. Right. So, so, but because this is Marvel, it's probably going to happen. Let's move on. Item number three. According to a report from Variety, Thor The Dark World and Thor Ragnarok screenwriter Christopher Yost has been brought on to write the upcoming Masters in the Universe film. The Jacob, when I was a little kid, I had the He-Man. I watched the Masters of the Universe. I, I can barely remember. I was quite young. I was, probably, I was probably three, four, five years old. I was born in the early 80s. So I'm excited about this because Thor, the Thor universe kind of reminds me of what, what Masters of the Universe is. It's yeah. kind of this tech, 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 technology with fantasy elements mixed in. What do you think? I, I'm actually pretty excited for this movie. I, Masters of the Universe isn't something that I'm uh, really that familiar with. I remember uh, seeing some episodes of the like the really old TV show. By never, the power of Grey Skull. Yes. <laughs> I never saw um, the the uh, Dolph Lundgren movie. I, I, I've seen a little <laughs> bit of it, so it's almost worth watching because it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've heard, and I, I actually really like uh, Thor two. It's not it's not like my favorite Marvel movie, but it like you said, it had a lot of the elements that I think you could put into a Master of the Universe movie, and. Like a, like a, a long t while back, a picture of Battle Cat from, from actually got released of like what he would look like in this movie, Ooh. and he, he looks pretty badass. Yeah, I mean, I want my own tiger, right? I want my own <laughs> Battle Cat. So if I could see this actually in action, I, that'd be wonderful. I can. It's it's weird. Like I saw this when I was a kid, Masters of the Universe. I had action figures. I remember this, but I again, it was off the air by the time I was you know maybe six or seven. This is early 80s it was on so i just had these vague memories of cool little tidbits here and there so i so maybe i don't know master of the universe as well as i think i do but i think that with the thor style and that guy they bring him to this at least what i'm imagining can be awesome yeah you know better than better than the Dolph Lundgren movie which is just yeah it's kind of amusing if you watch i've seen like 10 minutes of it with skeletor and it makes no sense <laughs> it's ridiculous um, it's like the Flash Gordon movie, another ridiculous movie they made in the 80s or the late 70s. Yeah. Um, but a lot of, I know a lot of fans, I saw this online, they are psyched. You know, people yeah. are a little older than me, maybe in their late 30s, early 40s. They're like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. I can't wait for it to happen. But we'll, I don't know if, if it will happen. This is preliminary talks. But did you have anything else to say about this? Uh, if they do make this movie, because uh, Mesh of the Universe is more of a like very campy property in the past that's what it's been if it, it makes this movie i want them to go like really serious with this cuz it's it's supposed to be like you know like this high octane action kind of like fantasy like a spectacle and right. that, that's, that's what i want from the this the dude movie. riding a tiger people well, <laughs> i mean yeah, i mean this guy could also do beastmaster maybe but let's like get out of my spiel about <laughs> beastmaster which i love so much as a kid let's move on right to item number 4 According to a report from Deadline, Warner Brothers will be developing a film adaptation of Dante's Inferno, which is the third part 
of the 14th century, the Divine Comedy poem, which is an Italian poem. I have not read it. I feel ashamed to say that <laughs> because it is a classic, and someday I'll probably get around to reading it. You ever read it? Ever read it in school? Uh, I haven't read it either. Hey, but, yeah. we're prepared like always. Yep. <laughs> But that's a very long poem. It's an epic poem. It's right. like it's like a full length of a book. It's like Beowulf. I mean, I have yeah. read Beowulf. It, yeah, me too. It, right. Yeah. And I think if they make this movie, it's going to be more like the video game that got released, which is all like action and he's fighting demons and going through the nine circles of hell. Oh, I, is that by Konami? I, I, it, it sounds like it. <laughs> but it, if they do make it, I think it's going to be like that. And there was this animated movie that's kind of based on the game that came out. And it had Mark Hamill as like one of the voices in it, and it, it was actually really good. And it, it had all it had all the action that the, uh, the video game had, and at the end he fought like this the big demon, and it, it was really good. And if they if they make this movie like that, I'll be I'll be satisfied. So another again, having not read the Divine Comedy, have you read the Divine Comedy, the Joe I? We have no idea what we're talking about right now, <laughs> folks. But I am guessing it's such a, such a classic. It, it might not have some of these elements that you're talking about. Might not be true to the original story. Yeah, I don't think they are at all. Now, again, a lot of these classics that we talk about do have all kinds of fantasy elements. A lot of Shakespeare plays have lots of lots of fantasy elements in Shakespeare. But this sounds like like a modern, if it's based on a video game, kind of ridiculous, over the top, a yeah. little cheesy, yeah. um, like a silly action movie is what you're describing. Yeah. But would that be true to the poem if, if it's just this is classic? Um, I don't think they really care if no. it's true to the poem or not. <laughs> Has anyone at bread? Has any of our viewers read the Divine Comedy? If you have read the Divine Comedy, whether it be in school, translation, if you're writing the original Italian, real thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section and tell us what did you think of it because I, I really have no idea what I'm yeah. talking about right now. Yeah. Play, playing a little bit of the video game and seeing the animated movie, what it's about is like this, uh, this guy, is on, he's like part of the Crusades and he comes back. Then his wife uh, is murdered and then she, he goes into the uh, Nine Circles of Hell to get yes. her back. So that that that's interesting. Yes, it is interesting. Yeah. And even if they don't go th the uh, action route, it, it could be pre like a, a really fun movie. And just because he's going through like, it's going to be a, a uh, adventure movie. Yes. Uh, uh, nevertheless, so I'm excited for this. I think that they're going to have a lot of r really uh, key like elements that they bring to this, and I, I'm just excited for this movie. Yeah, I, I'm. I am not. Uh, as excited for this movie, but I'm hoping for something that's interesting, and maybe it'll get me to read the Divine Comedy because I haven't read it. But we'll see what happens. Let, let's move on. Let's move on to item number five. The first episode of the CW Seed Show Vixen has been released, and we're going to give you a review of it. Okay, so we talked about this that there's going to be another uh, another CW show. It's actually part of the CW universe. So it's part of Flash, it's part of Arrow, but it's animated. Before you get into the actual uh, sh episode, what do you, what did you think of that concept, this idea? I thought it was a really interesting idea to uh, introduce a character that no one's really heard of and, not, and, and still give her her own show. So the, the, this, this uh, show, it's very short. I didn't expect it to be as short as it was. It's like five minutes an episode. But I actually really liked it. It, it, was, it was pretty interesting. It had Arrow and Flash in it for like 30 seconds. And it, it was pretty cool. Uh, I know that Vixen is, she, she is a smaller character. But I think with the show, they could bring her into the actual CW live action universe. I think, like I saw a picture of the actress. Like they kind of look alike, right? I think yeah. they purposely did that. Yeah. So the idea is they will bring her into the CW universe proper. Yeah. Uh, so usually, like, length of a show is not really that relevant, per se, unless it's, like, just too long and it's boring. But I was bothered by the short time frame. It was too short. Yeah. Like, I was interested. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then it just ended. So it's, it's too little. It's almost like a – to me, it was almost like a trailer. Like, you know how sometimes they release, oh, see the first ten minutes of this or the first yeah. five minutes of that? That's what I yeah. felt like, that, there that, that this was a longer story. And is this the format they're going to have going forward? Is it always going to be five-minute episodes? It, I think what it's supposed to be is a, is a limited series that's go, only going to be like one season. Okay. And, and I think they want it to be like a full season, and they're going, that's why they're like cutting episodes in half pretty much. That's what, that's what it feels like. They're, they they uh, cut the episode in half. But, so, but the episodes themselves are, aren't going to be you know, 42 minutes long like no. Flash and Arrow. They're going to be how long? 
probably like five minutes. Five each. minutes, and there's yeah. gonna be twenty two of them. Do you know? I, I don't know. I don't know what their what their plan is, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like a weekly show. Every like every Tuesday is gonna come out. But I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know what what the deal with the length is, but I think that they they have a reason behind it, and it's just gonna be like a, a small mini series introduced uh, to the to this character, and then they're gonna bring her into the actual uh, like live action universe. This feels like um, I wish to watch Battlestar Galactica, and they had something called the like web episodes or web shows or something, and they're just little five minute things, and they're released on the internet. Yeah, where is this released? On the internet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so once a week we're to get up to five minute thing. It feels to me like instead of doing you know once a week for I don't know how many weeks it's going to be thirteen weeks twenty two I don't know what it's going to be. I'd rather them double the length. I guess, and release that either less often or just release it if you're just do a 10-week run. Yeah. Because the way this, this format is too short. It feels like it's not enough time for me to get into it. Because what, ha what really happened in this episode? We, in the beginning, we see Arrow and Flash. They're trying to take down Vixen. Um, Flash obviously can't catch her because she's in <laughs> cheetah mode. And, but we'll, we'll put that aside, right? Uh, eventually, she falls off a building. I was hoping she would do form of a uh, falcon or something, <laughs> but it cuts short. And then we see her in jail. She gets out of jail. She's talking to her stepdad. And then some thugs come or something, right? Yeah, yep, and then it's over. Yeah, that, that, that's, not a, Jake, that's not an episode. That, yeah. that is not a story. That is, that is a piece of a story. Yeah. That is weird, this format. Yeah, it is very strange, but what we did see, actually, like, I liked how they showed her using her powers. Like, they showed, like, the shadow of the animal that she was uh, turning into. Right. As soon as they showed the shadow, I'm like, form of tiger, yeah. <laughs> form of this. That's, that's just what popped in my mind. I'm not yeah. even sure that's from. That's from something, from some geek yeah, thing. That, that's from um, the, the Power Twins, right? So, so, like, they have the rings and they... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is what it felt like. But it, it, was, it, it was really cool. It, it fit in this animated, uh, the frame that they put it in. Yes. And I, I think... In live action, it, it could still work like that. Um, yeah, it was it, it was never too over the top. Like, yeah. like this would be weird in live action. Like, I don't, like they didn't make the special effects so outrageous. Like the special effects so outrageous was like, well, how are they gonna pull that off in live action? No, yeah. it was all they could do it. Yeah, and um, there was a uh, featurette that was released uh, like two days before this came out, which was like half the length of the show. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, uh, and they. They actually like went to so what's actually going to happen like further on to the series, and and she's going to get that the the uh, classic suit that she has in the comics. She's she's going to, uh, to become an actual hero in this show. It seems like, so I think she, maybe she'll show up in uh, uh, Legends of Tomorrow first, maybe something like that. That 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 would fit. I just uh, I'm excited to see what's actually going to come out of the show. I just wish the the uh, episodes were longer. Yes, this this felt to me like a taste. Give me a little more. Um, do we know anything more about Legends of Tomorrow while we're talking about the CW universe? Um, nothing more has come out, just that it's going to be a show about the team of, like, pr basically the B-team Justice League. So, we, so we're going to have The Flash, The Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Vixen, and now we hear that Constantine, ooh, from, mm -hmm. from, from which channel, ABC? N uh, NBC. Oh, NBC, oh, from over here, my mistake. Mm -hmm. Coming in and populating this universe. I love it. The MCU... In the film sphere is amazing. DC, yeah, they're starting. But DC, as it comes to shows, wow, there's lots of stuff going on. And I'm hoping that Supergirl flies in to save the day one day. I want to see them all thrown in there. And I'm really loving this. But, but, I mean, there's a big but here. When some of the writers left Arrow to go to Flash, Arrow got worse. Yeah. Who's writing Legends of Tomorrow? Who's writing Vixen? Where are they getting these creative people from? Are they also from some of these other from some of the other teams? Are we now going to get like every show is going to go down a little bit because they have to spread out the talent? Because I hate when they do this. Like uh, Seth MacFarlane, the guy that he created Family Guy, he created another show, American Dad. Then he created another show, the Cleveland Show. Yep. <laughs> And each time he created another show, it's like it was all the same kind of humor. American Dad eventually branched off, but for the first few seasons, they're all the same humor, and each show suffered. It's yeah. like, wait a second, it's the same show, so you're just spreading out your jokes. So now it's like you're just spreading out your, your best ideas between four shows. Yeah. Is this it, concerning you? It, it is a little, a little bit concerning, but uh, 
going to into uh, Star Wars, they have their expanded universe. Where they have, we like, knew he'd slip that in there, folks. Yeah, yeah. He just slipped yeah, that it, in it, there. It's got to be in there. But they have like all the all the books, the video games, everything is all connected, and they have they, they have one team that looks over everything. They they, they keep the uh, continuity in place, so that they make sure that nothing like co contradicts one another. So I think if CW has has a team like that, that makes sure is is like everything's in place, everything's like everything's go going well, that it could. That that they uh, could benefit from that, but also hire like the the right people for each show. The, Do the, they have anything like that? They they probably have like an, a, a board of executives that just sit there and be like and be like, yep, c confirm that. <laughs> that, that that's not contradicting anything, so it's it's okay. <laughs> yep, yep. Have have Flash not catch up to that person? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. No, no. It makes sense there. It runs like a cheetah. Flash yeah. can't catch that person. Cha Ching. It, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but. If, if they could have something like that, then it, it, they could benefit and make sure that the right talent is involved with the right show. It seems to me that MC, the MCU, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, has shown the way to do it. They have Kevin Feige. He is the big boss. He's the guy like, oh, he's pulling the strings. He's the puppet master. He got some other guys around him, but I always forget their names, so I always yeah. just give him credit. But there is actually like a team of people. Yeah. That's like you said. It's like a, it looks like Star Wars. They're doing that with, with the rebooted continuity. Yeah. Right. It seems it's just like just do that. Just do what they're doing. But I worry that they're not going to do that because I already see with Arrow and Flash. Soon as that that team left, things. Yeah. yeah. But I'm hopeful. The Vixen, we we were excited about uh, Legends of Tomorrow. We really haven't seen anything from it, Legends of Tomorrow. Some yeah. of the footage was kind of pieced together from older shows. But I am still hopeful. Give me that Supergirl. We'll we'll be happy. To forget Jake's spitting about the Supergirl. <laughs> it's good. Let's move on. Item number six. Fantastic Four actor Toby Kebbell has been cast in the upcoming film Kong Skull Island, which will be released March 10th, 2017. The, class in, the, the cast includes Tom Hiddleston, is that how you say his name? Yeah. And Brie Larson. The Jacob, I, I have a few things to say about this, but why don't you tell me your thoughts? Okay. Um, I actually like Toby Kebbell as an actor. In Fantastic Four, we got to see him as Doom, but very few minutes of him and he was just yeah he was just like he it, it, i know he he wasn't that good as doom but i don't think that was all his fault i don't i, I don't blame it at all on him actually yeah. that writing was so terrible yeah so check out our fantastic before spoiler review online the youtube channel the movie yeah continue jake but uh he was actually in another monkey related movie he was in uh dawn of the planet of the apes doing a performance capture as one of the like evil ape that that was in in the in the movie. Ooh, who's the like Koba? Uh, yeah, Koba. He he was oh, Koba in that movie. Oh, uh, he was badass. Yeah, yeah. I love Koba. Yeah, so he he's a really good actor. I yeah, think, that's badass. Yeah, he was badass yeah. in that. All right. Yeah. All right. And adding him to uh to uh, Kong, I think is a, is a really good addition. They have Tom Hiddleston there already, which already makes me excited. And I th think that uh, this movie, if it, I, what I want them to do, I don't know if this is possible. What I want them to do is uh, fit it in. With Godzilla, because they, cause they, they could have Kong versus Godzilla, oh, like, duh. Way, like way back in like way back in the like the fifties when they had that movie, and uh, with the plastic like the skyscrapers yes. and the guys in the suits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so it's so ama it's amazing though. You should watch it. Yeah. you better watch it. <laughs> and um, but what they had to do with that was make like Kong like five hundred feet taller That's than he already the is. That's problem because Kong is only like fifty feet tall, and, and they're not going to shorten Godzilla. Yeah. So I don't think that I don't think that's realistic. It, it it's not really realistic, but it's the same like I, it's not the same company, but it's a company that's owned by Legendary who did Godzilla. So which is Godzilla and, and King Kong are ob obviously very realistic to begin with. So yes. so of course we can't con contradict that. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and um, but I'm really excited for this movie because I don't know if it's going to be like an, a King Kong origin story or like the, the uh, like a reboot of the the uh, the story or if he already went to the uh, to, to New, New York, York and climbed the tower, but somehow survived. I don't know. So something uh, I'm really excited to see what what they're going to do with this and the talent that they got involved makes me uh, really excited for this movie. But Jacob, let me tell you about King Kong. Saw the original one as a kid, loved it. Saw the '79 like remake. I uh, didn't like that one so much. They got rid of a lot of the other monsters. It was kind of weird. They yeah. used to fight that many monsters. Um, and I saw the the new one, the Peter Jackson. Was it Peter Jackson? Yeah. In theaters. 
all three of them, to varying degrees, all have the same problem. Yeah. They all started off eh, kind of slow. Their second act was fucking badass, <laughs> and their third act sucked. Same thing with Jurassic World 2. As soon as they brought the T-Rex to the city, <laughs> I hated it. All I wanted to see was King Kong bash other monsters. That's all. I, I just wanted to see that. So this idea is an idea, like, ever since I saw the first movie. As a little kid, I was like, oh, it's kind of boring now. He's in the city with the planes. <laughs> right? It's, like, even as a little kid, I kind of I realized that. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't like it, the third act as much. If they could just go to the island, it's like an adventure film. Like, say, kind of like... Like Jurassic, not like Jurassic Park, like it's an adventure film. Yeah. We're going to explore Kong Island. Let's go find out who, who's there. Yeah. And we'll, we'll see the T-Rexes. We'll see they can make, make up new monsters. Yeah. And then who knows what happens. Maybe Kong comes in to save the day. It's like, oh, the T-Rex is about to eat us. <laughs> <laughs> right? Who knows what's going to happen? But this excites me so much. But here's what I fear. Here's what I fear is what they're going to do. Like they do so many times with these goddamn movies. They are gonna have. They're gonna go to the island. Well, first, no, first they're, they're gonna talk about the island. So the first twenty minutes, half an hour, forty minutes of the film. Hey, we should go to this island. Yeah, we gotta prepare for this journey. Hey, let's let's do this. Hey, let's have a whole bunch of exposition scenes that no one gives a shit about. All right, cool. Okay, let's be on the boat now and just talk some more. All right, cool. Then they get to the island. Oh, it's so mysterious. What's happening? Oh, look, look, look right there, like in the corner. You kind of can see something. <laughs> oh, look right there. You can kind of see something. Oh, look, there's 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 leaves moving. And then finally in the third act, they show some, some monsters and they show King Kong, right? Just like Godzilla. That's what I fear is going to happen. It's going to be a bunch of, bunch of not, not much happening. And they finally show King Kong. It's going to be a bunch of shaky cam. It's going to be a guy, guy like looking in a rear view mirror somehow. This is a camcorder dude. I mean, they keep doing this. Why do they do this? I, 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 talk, to, I talk about this uh, in, a, in a Transformers editorial. Those movies, yeah, they're, they're ridiculous. But at least they just give you what people want. Like people came, I came here for the Transformers. Can you just show me a Transformer? Just show me one. Come on now. Yeah. I came here for Godzilla. Can you just show me? I don't want to see Godzilla's fins. I don't want to see Godzilla fucking up monsters. Can, can you just show me that? Is it, is it that hard? You got CGI people here. That's what I'm worried about, Jake. Are they, they going to do that to me? Are they going to slap me across the face? I don't think so because the, the fact that it's called Kong Skull Island makes, <laughs> makes me think that they're actually going to be on the island for the majority of the movie. I really hope they, they do that, and they actually have Kong there for the majority of the movie right. as well. He, he, he can come in and out. Maybe, maybe they, he can do the, like the, the Godzilla arc. Oh, he's kind of bad, and oh, oh no. He, what's his? But then in the end, he comes to save the day, and, he's, and he beats up a bunch of T-Rexes. Yeah. And then they don't take him to New York. And no, no yeah. don't. don't take, we say, oh, we'll let you save him in your own habitat, yeah. right? And they don't kill him like Cecil the Lion. They don't, they don't do it, any of that horrible things, and Kong is a hero at the end. Yeah. And then Godzilla shows up and he, they fight and it makes no yeah. sense. But, <laughs> so there's all kinds of ideas that could do. Um, who, do you, who, you know who's directing this? Um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, who direct, who's directing it. I'm not sure if they even have a director yet, but I know that it's going to... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming out in 2017. Right. So, so they have to get out. So this on this is confirmed. So they're, they're yeah. moving on this. Yes. Okay. And um, the, what really makes me uh, sad about this movie was that they originally had uh, J.K. Simmons and... Uh, the guy who plays it at Batman originally, uh, Mike Keaton. In this movie together, I, I was so on board, then they left because of uh, sc uh, scheduling com conflicts. I was like, God damn it. But, now, but, <laughs> but, 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 but they, have, they still have an impressive roster of talent in this movie. They have uh, Toby Kebble, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson. So I think, I think they're on the right track. Right. And, and the real roster for me, though, I agree those actors are good, is, is the monsters. Yeah. If they can pull up the monsters, I'm down. Because the original... Watched it. Maybe we should, do, we should do. Have you seen the original King Kong movie? No, I never seen the original okay. one. You, you need to watch the original King Kong movie. It came out in 1939. I'm gonna say late yeah. 30s. It's actually, it's really fun to watch. Yeah. It's cheesy today, but but the special effects were like groundbreaking at the time. Yeah. It, and it's a fun movie. And you know what they do with that movie? It, I know it's stop motion animation, but they actually show you the monsters. King Kong fights a bunch of monsters. Yeah. You, and it's cool. That's what I want to see. I want to see yeah. him fight a bunch of monsters. A very like uh, unrelated. Uh, Quick a bit of information about King Kong. It was, that was actually the first movie to get a sequel. It had, it, they had a Son of Kong. And I, I'd never seen that one either, but I, I, I think I've seen. I think I've seen Son of Kong because I, I was a kid. I was really into it, and I remember like watching like I don't know certain channels like AMC movie like back when it was like only old movies. I, I'm not sure what it was called, and they would show those movies. Yeah, I, I may, maybe I will watch the uh, the original King Kong. The original one. Yeah, comment in the section if you want me to watch it. And also, li like this video. Um, if we get to a certain number of likes, maybe I'll watch it if I have the time. We'll, we'll see.
We'll see. It, it, you should watch it too, folks. Yeah. Watch it at home. But anyways, we have now reached that part of the show that we call Geek Talk. This is where we talk about anything in the geek world of movies and TV. Today, we are going to do a review. What are we reviewing, the Jacob? Today, we are reviewing the new AMC show, Fear the Walking Dead. Ooh, I'm already scared. So, this is a spinoff. We know... <laughs> No funny stuff, Joey. We we know what The Walking Dead is. So the zombie apocalypse, it actually happened. Um, and then somehow the dictatorship came out of it. You don't need to worry about the dictatorship. If you don't already know about that, then why are you even watching this show? Um, and they had like five seasons of that. They're, they're going to keep doing that. And they went, hey, you know what? This is in Atlanta on the East Coast. Why don't we go check out what people on the West Coast are doing? Jacob? What were you? What well, before you started? What were your thoughts? Like before you just turned on, you're about to watch it. You're like, I, it's about to about to start. I'm about to watch it. What were you thinking? What was in your head? Uh, what I, what I was hoping, uh, go, going into this uh, this TV show was, I really hope they don't show us exactly what happens. It, um, what what actually caused the zombie apocalypse? Okay. What what made people zombies, walkers, yeah. or whatever yeah. they call? They're gonna yeah. Call them here. We, we know we know it's a virus, but I don't need to know where that came from. Right. Okay. And they, they, they didn't do that, so, so that, that was good. But I also was like, I hope they really show the zombies in, in, this, in this zombie TV show. And they didn't really do that at all. They showed us, like, two zombies. Yeah. And, and, it, and it was the first episode. They're, they're going to go more into it. But it, the show didn't, didn't keep me interested. It, didn't, it had, 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 like, one or two in, interesting characters, but they didn't, like, they, they didn't go anywhere with them. It, the, the characters in this show... I don't care about any of them. I, I, I know it's just one episode of an a ongoing TV show, but this first episode just, just didn't do it for me. There, there, there's you, the Jake nailed it. They didn't keep me interested. So I had this really weird experience with it where a lot of the times I, w I was doing kind of one of these deals. But then I'll have to say there were a few scenes in here where I'm like, oh, oh the, like the music was really good. There's a couple times when they really... Good yeah. job, composer. I, sh I didn't write your name down, but they like he pumped me up. The music. I was like, "Oh, let's let's do this. What's happening?" And like a couple things almost happened. Yes, but it never really. Nothing really big ever came down. Like it felt like, uh "Oh, like the, like there's one point where they're on the freeway, and like the music starts getting more intense, and, and things seem to be happening." And I expected some people like I expected to hear screaming and see the crowd come. Yeah, and that didn't happen. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> like we heard some gunshots, and that was it. I, I expected that to escalate. Yeah, because that if the music felt like. Uh oh, we're we're moving to something. But then they just drove off. Yeah. Right. Okay, but let's. So let me let me go a little more detail about the flow of the show. So it's about these two families. Um, they're both the, the the parents are both divorced. They both have kids from prior marriages, and they're now living together. Uh, so we start off the movie. We start the show with standard, what I would say, generic family drama. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It wasn't done poorly. I didn't go. This is fake. These people. This is not how people act. No, it, it felt like yeah. This felt like these felt like real people. Yeah. But I didn't care. I, I, I could watch any show to we get generic family drama. Any show I could watch to do that. Yeah. So for like the first twenty minutes or something is generic. Oh, let me, there's one scene at the very beginning where we meet one character and we see a zombie and it's like two seconds and that's it. Yeah. But then for the next twenty minutes, it's generic family uh, drama. None of it's bad. If this, if this was another kind of show, it would probably be good. If this, if this is what you were looking for, people look for this. People like these kind of shows. Yeah. It'd be, it would work. But that's not what this is. This is Fear the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. I came for The Walking Dead. This buildup that you're, you're doing for me is kind of counterproductive because I already have The Walking Dead. Yeah. I already have the zombie apocalypse. I already have the payoff. Yeah. So now you're trying to make me build up for the same payoff. Yeah. Right? That's what I felt. Yeah, we, we already... We already got this uh, the the build up in in the first season of The Walking yes. Dead. We, we already are already uh, introduced to, to this universe. And what, what I thought this uh, show actually did good was it made it feel like it was actually in the same universe as The Walking Dead. It had it had that same feel. To yes, it. it did. Have, it, it did feel similar. You're right. Yeah, and in a good way because yes. Walking Dead is, has been has been a very uneven show. Yes. But this reminded me more of the first season. Yeah. Like like the, like the character drama in, in like The Walking Dead is often. So cliche and forced, yeah. and people just do things that make no sense. It's just to set up a scene. Here, like I felt the people acted believably. Like, like, for, like the, the, the drug uh, addicted son. I'm like, 
Yeah, this isn't like some ridiculous character drug addict. Yeah, okay, I, I can go with this. All right, sure. This is this is pretty good, but I'm not turning in. I'm not tuning in for pretty good family drama. Yeah. I'm turning in for great zombie action, and then give me that. Yeah, I, I completely agree about that. And um, the, yeah, go, going back to the characters, they, uh, th I agree that the, they had really good family drama in it, and then. Uh, there's that one scene where, where the, the uh, dad made that really stupid decision to uh, go into that church uh, by himself. And then and, like, th there was a like, really, really good, uh, great build-up. And he's just like, and you like hear the music, like you said. And then he, then he uh, sees that guy that like, runs away. He's like, no, come back. And he, then he just sees blood on the floor, and then, then it cuts away. And I was just like, I, I, want, I want more out of this. Well, like, th that was so bizarre. Yeah. First off... I was a little confused by him just going back there after that stuff happened, but then I was like, okay, wait a second. He's dealing with a guy that's been a drug addict for a while, who's probably told him all kinds of crazy stories. This actually, so I, I, I buy that. I buy that makes sense. That makes sense to me. So that he, that he would be like, okay, you're just crazy. You don't, you know what you're talking about. Let me just go look for whatever. But and I saw like a quote on maybe it was IGN. One of the one of the people, uh, uh, the producers here, are saying we don't want to have like that generic, like stupid character that does, that does dumb things <laughs> that, make, that the audience they, he knows is stupid, right? Yeah. Like, build a dinosaur. Build a who's build a dinosaur? No, just in like Jurassic Jurassic Park. Like, oh, that stupid decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they didn't want they didn't want the stupid generic character, and and I don't think it got too extreme in that way. I I, I never thought they went too stupid on us. But this was the closest they got to stupid because he gets into that church, he counters the blood, and you think at that point, oh my God, I'm going to run or I'm going to go call the police. Yeah. He doesn't do that. And then he has that, that weird conversation with his girlfriend where he talks about it. He's like, there's a lot of blood there. Yeah, well, bad things happen in drug dens. And they just forget <laughs> about it. Like, really? I know. Imagine if you walked in that situation. There's like a bloodbath happening, yeah. like multiple, multiple murders. Yeah. I know, I know this guy is, is a drug addict, but I... I after after the explanation that he gives about like, oh like I, I saw someone eating someone else there, I would I would call the police, you know like I I, I would believe uh, that him I would actually like I, I would at least call call police to, to uh, go check it out at least. So th they're making dumb decisions in the show, but that's what I expected. Right, I, I expected. I don't think it quite as dumb as you say since. I've had the misfortune of meeting many people that, that they'll tell you a lot of ridiculous things, right? Sometimes people, especially when you're not in the right state of mind, you might have thought you saw something and you didn't. Yeah. But as soon as he saw actual evidence of it, right? Because at first it's just the guy saying it who's, who's he's withdrawing from, he's withdrawing, he's, he's having problems. Maybe he had a nightmare, right? But as soon as you see the guy scream, that, that was the part where it got stupid. <laughs> well, there's a screaming guy who runs. It's like, as soon as that guy happens, I go... Whoa, oh, I'm going to leave now. Because here's the other problem. If you're going to the, the drug den and you know it's dangerous, okay, there's a lot, there could be a lot of addicts there. There could be people that might want to rob you. Yeah. There's all kinds of other reasons not to go there. <laughs> just just uh, forget, the, forget the zombies. Forget, forget the killing. That's a, that's a, a dangerous place to be in. And, and, you know, some shooting gallery. You don't want to go there. So there's a lot of reasons why that was dumb. So we, we can combine our various reasons and yeah. we'll just say it was really stupid. Yeah. Good job. Um, were you teased, though, for, like, are you excited at all about the next episode? Not that much, because I, I saw this on, on AMC on, on TV, and they have, like, a preview of what's going to come for, for the rest of the season, and I didn't really care about anything that they showed. It's all, it was in the trailer, right? Most yeah. of it? Yeah. It was just like, like, the, the army comes, they're like, you guys are going to stay behind this wall, and that's it. And I remember in the trailer, eventually the chaos ensues. Yeah. They're going to meet some, I don't know, some other family. They're going to have to stay with them. And I guess they're, I saw, I saw a, a picture of the cast. I guess that other family is going to be part uh, of, that, of the like, ongoing cast and probably going to be killed off uh, one by one because they weren't introduced in, the, introduced in the first episode, so they're not very important. So yeah. we, we know that already, right? And that's the other problem I have. Like, I'm already predicting characters' deaths. You know, who knows how accurate I'd be, but I'm already thinking those characters that were introduced in the first episode, they're not long for the world. Yeah. And, and because I know the way Walking Dead works about killing people, and because I think that these characters are, are like devalued compared to the real the look, look what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm, I, I'm saying the real cast. Yeah. This is the B team. That's what it, There you go. It's the B team. I just came up with it right now. 
that's the problem. It's like the B team. It's like the B story. Yeah. I got the real story. I got, I got the Rick Tater ship, okay? I'm, I'm going to stick with that. I don't want to see this bullshit. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it, it wasn't horrible. Right. I, I'm, I'm still going to watch the next episode. We'll probably do a review for like the mid-season finale because you know they're going to have that. And then, Obviously, and then, they have to to make money. Yeah. And then, so so we'll, we'll do a review of, of more of the episodes as it goes on. So stick around for that. Yeah. Let, let us move on now. It is now time for the segment we like to call Old School. And this week, we're talking about Mortal Kombat, the Jacob. We mentioned this somehow to each other, and then we're like, yes, let's do a segment on this. When I was a kid, that's what I did. I went, Mortal Kombat. When I was in the theater and I watched this, I went, dude, did you see that? Did you see Scorpion? Oh, yeah, bro. And I thought this was the greatest movie ever. Jacob, this is not the greatest movie ever. No, it is not. Can you go into a little bit? So I didn't watch this movie for the first time. I, I watched the movie for the first time a little, like, not, not that long ago. And I, I was watching it. I'm like, all right, I'm ready for some really awesome but terrible, like, action scenes. I'm ready because I heard this movie was, I heard, I heard it was so bad it's good. And I was ready for that. I'm watching it. I'm like, okay. So there's, there's that, that awesome theme song. I'm, I'm pumped, but it was it it was just bad. It, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't so bad as good. It was just bad. I did not have a fun time with that movie at all. Like I I know it, it did it did some some things well. It brought the characters from the, from the uh, video game to life. And and they they had that awesome scene with Johnny Cage where he uh he does his nut punch move. <laughs> I, I, yeah. That that was hilarious. And. So it, it, I had a little bit of a, of a fun time see, seeing the action scenes played out with, with the theme song playing over it. So that, the music that, was one of like few like consistently good things about it. I know exactly. So at the end of this movie, when they I know I know it's a sequel, but when they uh, tease the sequel at the end, I was like, I'm not gonna watch that. <laughs> I'm not. No. I'm not interested in it at all. Uh, then but, when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, yeah. all right, let's do this. Yeah, you said when, when you were a kid, you were like, Mortal Kombat. Oh, my God, yeah. So I saw Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And I remember <laughs> actually cheering in the theaters. We were, we were so into it. We were poor, so we, so we, didn't, like, we couldn't go to it right at the beginning. So by the time we actually like, saved up like 10 bucks to see it, there weren't that many people at the theater. So we literally were cheering. Like, were like, like the Street Fighter movie. Have you ever seen the Street Fighter movie? I've never seen that. We're cheering in that. When we saw the Mortal Kombat movie, we left the theater like, man, that was bad. Yo, you saw the part where Scorpion thing came out and came out of his hand. <laughs> oh, it was so ridiculous looking. It looks so real. <laughs> <laughs> you watch that movie now and the effects are, are they're, they're laughable. They're, they're so bad. They're like but, PlayStation 2, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. CGI. Yeah, but back then they, they were even considered not, not that yeah, good. Yeah, they weren't good back then. We were just young and stupid. We didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, and but now um, I'm actually a fan of Mortal Kombat, not because of that movie, but because of the, the video games <laughs> and the, uh, the web series that I've seen. So now, like back then you were like, Mortal Kombat. Now, I, now me, as, as an adult, I'm like, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and I want to see, <laughs> see what, what they're going to uh, go forward with, with this uh, franchise. And I think it's definitely going to be a lot different from 20, 20 years ago when this movie came out. Right. The, the most interesting thing about this is, like, you don't have the nostalgia I have as a kid. No. Right? So I, I saw it again recently. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But, like, when it came out, it was people were like, hey, it's finally a, a, a good video game movie, which is amazing. But if you consider the movies at the time, like, you should, you should watch Street Fighter if you haven't seen it already. You think Mortal Kombat is bad. Street Fighter, to me, takes it to the next level of stupidity. <laughs> Because I've rewatched Street Fighter, and they don't get Street Fighter. That's the problem with it. Like they screw it up, right? <laughs> it's not just like the characters brought to life. It's the characters brought to life, and then they mess it off. They have the guy playing Guile, the All American Hero. He's John Claude Van Damme. Yeah, he <laughs> looks like him, but why does he have the accent? They have all these characters, and they change the way they look. They're not in their traditional costumes. They don't look like the characters. Here, the characters are like, oh, yeah, yeah, he looks like, he looks yeah. like Kano. He looks like Scorpion. Yeah. Right? They, must, they actually look like the characters. Yeah. And but, then Shang Tsung is badass. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. He's the only guy that I would say the performance actually holds up today. Yeah. It's cheesy and over the top, but it really works for that, for that performance. Like I, think, like, I think it makes sense in that context. Yeah. His, you know, um, for all this victory. And I, I, can't, I can't do the face and the look because that guy, like, he, like, he's been in a lot of other fighting movies. Like, was he, he's in Bloodsport, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's in a lot of those, those 80s action movie, martial arts action movies, that dude. And he just has that look about him, like, all right, dude. All right. Yeah. We're cool. We're cool. 
All right, whatever you want, man. Does he? Does he looks like that? He look. He looks like he embodies it. On the other hand, so we take him, who like really just he he embodied the role. A lot of the other characters, like Scorpion, um, Johnny Cage, they they feel like they're from the game. The biggest mistake, the biggest problem, where they just they just fucked it all up. Like mm-hmm. I, like I saw this movie recently, and I'm like, how did I? How was I not bothered by this when I was a kid? Is Raiden? Yes. What I, the, what the yes. fuck is Raiden? I know. I was just about to mention that. I. I Right in that in that movie, I I hated it because in in the video games he's like he's the, the god of thunder, right? And then in this, and he's always ominous, and he has the cap, yeah. that, the, 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 the the Chinese cap on. Yeah. In this, he was like so like stereotypical, like just like a guy that's like gonna bring everyone together, and he, he had that really weird voice. I hated I hated his voice, and it didn't fit the character. And I've heard I've seen um. Freaking oh God! He, he's the the, High, the Highlander guy, Christopher Lambert. Is that his name? I think so. Right, the, he's, he's from Highlander. That's not how he sounds. Like he 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 actually went. He looked in the mirror one day. It was like, <laughs> hmm, okay. And he did, and that's the voice he came up with, right? Yeah. He was like trying to practice it. It doesn't make sense. I'm not sure what accent he's going for. And I don't know why they picked a white guy to play Raiden. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. He did, he's he's complete joke. Every time he tries to fight or do something, there's a scene early on where he fights Luke Kane in like a monastery. It's complete. It's terrible. <laughs> and let, let, now let's go to some of the stuff that's a mixed bag. The action scenes. Yeah. Some of the action scenes. First of all, all the fighting is completely ridiculous and is not, has no basis in real world fighting. Like, right? Like it's, it's just dancing. Yeah. Like the nut punch move. <laughs> right, yeah. It's all. It's all dancing. It, it's. It's nothing like how things actually are. But. But. Some of it, some of it is kind of cool looking, and some of it is not so cool looking. So, the person that really sucks in this is Sonya Blade. Yes. What the hell did you? Who did you hire? Who who did you hire? I, <laughs> I don't understand. She, is she, I, I assume like the like the the Chinese guy playing Liu Kang. I'm pretty sure he's a martial artist and like a yeah. stunt a stunt actor because he knows what he's doing. The guy playing Johnny Cage, he could do the spinning kicks. He can do the punches, right? We we can debate whether that's realistic or not. That doesn't matter. Like for this context, it's what they did in the video game. He can do it. The person playing Sonya, she can't do any of her moves. Nope. And to make it even worse, and this and this I also thought was kind of insulting. They made all the women really terrible. The person that playing Melina, is that her name? Yeah. I don't think she's ever done an action scene in her <laughs> life. No, probably not. I mean, she had a fight scene with Liu Kang. It was bizarre. They're not fighting. They're just talking and occasionally doing this. Yeah. Like, huh, you must do this and that. Huh, you must do this and that. <laughs> it's really, really awkward. Yeah. Um, so, this is, so this movie is a total mixed bag. I still got some nostalgia value out of seeing it. Did you guys... I remember when I was a kid, and that, that Mortal Kombat, did that Mortal Kombat mu- music started playing, and they did the Mortal Kombat. And I kind of liked the way Goro looked. What did you think about Goro? Yeah, I thought he was uh, probably the best like special effect looking character in, yeah. in, in, in the movie. But the character that I thought they totally butchered was uh, Rep- Reptile. That was... Wh- it burns! Wh- why did you do that? Why did you make him this actual like an actual lizard? Like, <laughs> it, it was so dumb. And then then they then, then the end they like made, made him actually like an actual human. It, it didn't make any sense at all. No. But we know there's a lot of people out there that actually love this movie. Actually consider it a like w- the only good uh, video game movie out there. But the standard is low there though, Jacob. Yes. The bar is yes. It's very, off the screen. I can't go that low. Yes. Very low. And so we we. No, we know that this is a popular movie. It's just not our thing. Right. Because we, we want a non-cheesy and non-over-the-top Mortal Kombat. No, movie. yeah. See, I remember things when I was a kid, right? And I want that, like, memories I have as a kid brought to life. But the thing is, I'm not remembering how it is. I'm remembering my emotions at the time. So, like, for Power Rangers. We talk about the Power Ranger movie, how we liked yeah. it when we were kids. I remember my emotions about how awesome it is. Yes. When... When I saw that uh, that Power Rangers short movie made, did you see that Power Rangers yeah. short movie? You know, it's pretty like violent, and they're never, they're never gonna make it like that. I got the emotions I got when I was a kid. It was the same emotions, right? I was like, oh yeah, Power Rangers, and they're doing cool stuff. But now it's to my taste. So with Mortal Kombat, I remember as a kid, and I remember it being one way. Then I see it, and I'm like, oh no, this actually is pretty pretty bad and terrible. Yeah. You might you might want you might be interested if you like into Mortal Kombat, or maybe. Maybe you saw as a kid. It's probably a fun time to watch, just to you know, 
wants to make fun of it or whatever. Yeah. Or, who knows? But we're, we're, we're now nearing, sadly, the Jacob. I know it's, it's, it's sad times. The end of Geeks at the Movies today. But before we leave, um, I have an announcement I want to make. Um, if you may not know this if you're watching on YouTube, but we actually air in Eastern Connecticut on Charter 192. That's Charter Channel 192. So you can check us out every 4.30 on a Friday. That's, that's why we say that, because we're actually a TV show. We are now uh, airing on CBC5. So if you're in the Thailand, Andover, or more in the Eastern Connecticut area, you have CBC5, you can watch us at the same time, uh, same date. Um, so, so check that out. Otherwise, they can get, you can get all the Geeks content online, on YouTube, on Facebook. It's always Geeks at the Movies. Put it in the quotes, type it, and you'll, 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 it'll come up. Um, please click that like button. It really, it really helps, us out, helps us come up in searches more often. But Jacob, did you have anything you wanted to say? You can also find us on Facebook. We're uh, 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 going to be making a, a, twi a Twitter soon, right? Yes. Yep. Well, it, 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 it's been in the works, but the thing is with these shows, is you don't understand the work you have to do. Like before, I, I was like, oh, well, let's sign up for a Twitter. And then it's like, oh, wait, are you doing Twitter correctly? What's the proper way to do Twitter? And there's all these pages of information how to do Twitter right. It's amazing. Like you, our YouTube channel, it's all this stuff underlying YouTube that you don't even realize that you can do until you start like getting into it. Like, wait, you can do this? You can do this? All these, you folks won't even, won't even notice it under the hood, but it makes us, our channel more popular, come up in searches more often. So as soon as we figure out how to do the Twitter the right way, we are going to do it. Yeah, so you can find us on all the various social media networks eventually. eventually. So, yeah, like us on like us on Facebook, YouTube, all the all the stuff he just said. And yeah, that, that's show for today, right? Excellent. So, my name is Shane Goodrich. This is Jacob Desitels, and we're geeks at the movies. What, what was it, director's cut? No, it was the. I'm pretty sure it was just the regular. Yeah, that's, that's garbage. It got, it got panned by reviewers. I, and remember, I remember I was watching it, and then I. Which just felt I was missing all these key plot points, and then at the end of the movie, I was just like, "It got pan." The, it's so bizarre. It got panned by reviewers, and then the, then that the, the forty-five minute directors came out and like, "This is a pretty good movie," and it got good reviews. It's like it's so bizarre how they did that, how they fucked that movie up. After I watched The Duelist, I looked up Ridley Scott's stuff, and I clicked on Kingdom of Heaven. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I remember that movie." Yeah. Except I don't remember anything. He does. A lot, I like Ridley Scott. The reason I got into Ridley Scott because it was all his historical dramas. He does 1492, Conquest of Paradise, Gladiator, The Duelist, Kingdom of Heaven. Right. That's why I got into him because of that.